Please welcome back to the stage, Eric Kraft. Thanks very much, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, welcome to Enterprise Connect 2017. Uh, on behalf of the entire Enterprise Connect event team, I want to welcome you and tell you that we're very, very glad that you're here. Uh, we also bring you greetings from our hometown of Chicago, Illinois, home of your World Series champion, Chicago Cubs. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> people are still laughing. It really happened. And, and just the fact that I could utter that last sentence and not get laughed off the stage totally um, shows that we're living in some remarkable times. Um, that's true in many facets, facets of our world today, uh, and it's true in the world of enterprise communications as well. Uh, there's, and there's no better place to see that happen than an Enterprise Connect 2017, so y'all are definitely in the right place. And we're definitely off to a great start. The session rooms were buzzing yesterday, especially our new conference within a conference, Communications and Collaboration 2020, which was packed all day long. The show floor was hopping last night, and there's an energy here that I think you can feel that shows that something's happening in this industry, and this is definitely where we're going to see it happen. At this year's event, you're going to learn about new technologies that are already changing the world and changing the way your end users work and the way potentially you work and provide them with their communications and collaboration. There's three of these trends that I want to highlight this morning because I think they'll be with us for some time, even if they're trends that you and your users are only beginning to experience. First one is team collaboration, uh, which is a, a fairly new class of products, uh, applications that we've gotten to know through viral spread of, of uh, names like Slack and HipChat now joined by pretty much all the vendors in our space. You think of Cisco, Spark, Microsoft Teams, Unify Circuit, as well as now just about all the other vendors and many of the unified communications as a service providers, Ring Central with Glib, for example. These apps feature persistent chat, uh, and you can also bring in just about any other media or process that uh, you can think of. Um, enterprise users organize the work and organize their teams into some sort of groupings that follow a metaphor like rooms or channels or something of that nature. Uh, for the first time this year, we're devoting an entire track to team collaboration applications because we think that, that this is something we will be hearing a lot more of. Uh, potentially, it could even fulfill the vision of unified communications that we've heard about for so many years, but maybe never fully materialized in the world that came to be known as UC. Because they're potentially so versatile and customizable, uh, these uh, team collaboration applications and the model they represent uh, are showing a lot of promise. Uh, but of course, the devil is going to be in the details, as it always is, looking at how they work, how well they work, and whether they really do help people get work done. Uh, all of that's still up in the air, and a lot of it is going to depend on you and your end users. We're looking at the details of team collaboration uh, in breakout sessions this week, and we've also got a general session tomorrow morning at this time looking at team collaboration. The title of that session reflects what we think the fundamental question about these applications is. It's called Team Collaboration Overhyped or the Next Platform. We think they could be overhyped because just about anything can be overhyped these days. But we think they could be the next platform potentially because of the second trend that I want to talk to you about, and that's APIs. APIs, or application programming interfaces, uh, probably isn't a new term for many of you. Uh, APIs let enterprises uh, integrate communications into business applications, into workflows, just about anything else you can think of that powers our enterprises digitally. APIs are a big part of why team collaboration apps are so promising because they let so many capabilities get integrated into those apps. Video, content sharing, you name it. We got to see APIs in action over the weekend, even before the Enterprise Connect conference started. Uh, and we got to see the results uh, in a breakout session yesterday, thanks to uh, our friend Alan Quayle, who brought his uh, Tad Hack hackathon uh, to Orlando. Uh, we'd like to thank Alan and his sponsors and his hackers uh, for really opening up our eyes to 
uh, the ease with which even a beginner can code with telecom APIs. In fact, there's a, a rumor that uh, my colleague and our associate editor for No Jitter, Michelle Burbick, may even have done a little coding at the hackathon. Communications APIs also hold the promise that enterprises will be able to integrate in a, and integrate communications with their own internal applications and processes. I think it's fair to say that the industry is still exploring the best ways to do this, but there is a lot of promise there, uh, and a lot of people are making some big bets on that promise. Later on this morning, we're gonna hear from Jeff Lawson, uh, founder and CEO of Twilio, whose IPO was the hottest such debut uh, of its kind in tech last year. Uh, Twilio's model is built on the idea of offering APIs into a cloud-based communications platform. Jeff's actually uh, been on this stage in panels and, and been at the show in the past, and here and elsewhere, he's always said that Twilio are, as he calls it, software people. Uh, and that's really the bottom line in all this, is that communications is becoming a software-powered business. There's still a lot of hardware out there, and obviously a lot of enterprises still rely on it, and we've got plenty of sessions here at Enterprise Connect for you if uh, you need to make sure that you get the most out of the hardware and installed base that you have. Uh, for many of you, those systems are still on the job, they're working, they're doing fine, and the longer you can keep them running, the more you can save and potentially redirect resources into building up some new capabilities. But the future clearly is in software, and that future is just about upon us. The final trend uh, is the cloud, which of course ties back into software as well. Just about everyone seems to believe that the cloud is the future of communications and collaboration. Just about all the market research shows shipments of PBXs and other CPE declining while cloud seats grow rapidly. But it does seem likely that large enterprises will continue to view the cloud cautiously, at least for a while. Elka Popova of Frost & Sullivan, who's presenting a session on UC as a service or UCAS market late, um, tomorrow afternoon, reports that SMBs will represent the majority of hosted IP telephony and UC users through 2022. So another five years where it's a, a, a largely uh, or majority SMB play. But uh, she does note that the number of uh, medium and large businesses using UCAS will also be increasing during that time. Another point that Elka makes and that we've seen transpire over the past couple of years is that the cloud doesn't just mean UCAS anymore. In fact, it doesn't even just mean UCAS for the companies that we used to think of as pure play UCAS providers, your, your 8x8s and, and Vonage and Ring Central type companies. Uh, those UCAS providers are now offering ranges of capabilities that include contact centers, API platforms, even interoperability services uh, that can work to to uh, attempt to tie together diverse team collaboration systems. Furthermore, there's the potential for some true disruption coming to this market, and it's coming from the direction of the cloud. Our industry looks like it's becoming one place where the public cloud providers may be competing with each other. That's why the presence of Amazon Web Services, or AWS, on the Enterprise Connect keynote stage later this morning is a significant milestone in this industry. You'll also see Google on the stage tomorrow where they'll show some of the moves they're making into this market. And of course, sandwiched in between those talks, we're gonna have a keynote from a little company called Microsoft. What AWS, Microsoft, and Google have in common is that they're the three market leaders in the burgeoning public cloud market. That AWS and Google are now positioning to challenge in our market shows their desire to move up the stack, as they say. And of course, Microsoft was pretty much born up the stack. Finally, the first company we'll hear from later this morning has something to say about the cloud as well. Cisco is increasing, increasingly positioning its Spark product as the future, and they hope your future also. And Spark is powered by the cloud. So we have a cloud communication story that started in UCAS and is rapidly embracing all communications functions. It's becoming clear that as the cloud becomes more important across enterprises, it'll be affecting communications in all sorts of ways. Does that mean you'll be migrating all of your communications to the cloud in the near term? Not necessarily. But when you have a strategic decision to make about communications, it's not likely you'll be able to ignore the cloud. 
So those are three of the big new trends we're watching and showing off here at Enterprise Connect 2017. And I haven't gotten into the stuff that's even further out there. Things like Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, analytics, speech technology. For many of you, these may still be in the future, but that future may come at us sooner than we might have thought just a few years ago. So we've devoted some time here at the show and on the program to delving into these other technologies and how they relate to the communication systems that you'll be building in the future. Our innovation showcase program this year was devoted to IoT and Dave Michaels did a session on that yesterday. Uh, and I hope you'll check out, there's an innovation showcase zone on the show floor this year as there always is and our six winners from innovation showcase are there. Uh, and you should check them out. It's, it's interesting stuff and it's something that I think may grow from a little zone on the floor to something much bigger for us. When it comes to AI and analytics, we're gonna try something different. Uh, we're gonna try to open up our thinking about the potential of, of what these advanced technologies can do. We're gonna do it by literally taking the show outside. We're gonna go outdoors and do our first ever summit on the lawn as we call it. Uh, so late tomorrow afternoon, we'll, we'll gather on the beautiful Gaylord Palms event lawn for a quick session or not so quick, an hour, uh, talking about AI and analytics. And then once that concludes, we'll have a little break and we'll go right into our Wednesday night appreciation party. So I hope you'll be planning to stick around for those things. The bottom line here is that our industry is facing some real change in the coming years. And we're delighted that you decided to join us this week as we start to examine that change. I hope you'll take advantage of all the things we have planned for you this week in the session rooms, networking over lunch or coffee or dinner or a drink and of course on the show floor. I want to encourage you to spend as much time as you can on the show floor, meeting our exhibitors, seeing the innovation that they've brought to the event, taking advantage of all they have to offer. I want to extend a special thanks to our diamond sponsors, 8x8, GenBand, Genesis, Microsoft, Mitel, RingCentral, Unify, and Vonage. So I'm just about ready to get started here. I hope you are too. We've got a packed schedule this morning, so I need to do just a little bit of housekeeping. We've only got 15 minutes between our keynotes this morning, so please help us out and move quickly if you're going to move between keynotes. Um, if you're not gonna stay for the next one, please exit quickly, and if you're coming in for a keynote, please find a seat quickly and get, get settled if you can. That'll, that'll help us out a lot, help us cram more stuff in for you this morning. Um, and another thing that, that's really important uh, that I wanna make and make sure we point out to you is if you do leave the keynote room, you've got to take your stuff with you. Um, we're expecting uh, most, if not all, of our uh, keynotes to, to be completely filling the room. And what happens is when the room reaches capacity, the fire marshal makes us close the doors and doesn't let us let any more people in. So if you leave your stuff in here and you go out and then the room fills up and we have to shut the doors, um, we're not going to be able to let you in to get back your stuff. So please just, if you're going to leave, just, just keep your stuff with you uh, at all times. That's probably the, the safest way to make sure that you don't have a lot of angst. So to get us started and to continue, we're going to uh, continue our tradition that we've had now for several years of kicking off the, the Tuesday morning with uh, a panel of enterprise end users uh, who are going to share their strategies and their visions around communications. Uh, and to moderate that panel, I'm really, really happy to introduce my program co-chair, the editor of No Jitter, the fabulous Beth Schultz. 